Hi, welcome to the bathtub. This is the old masturbator. This is Lucky the Wonder Dog. She just hears the beeping of the camera and she has to come up. And then she wants to look out the window and bark at people. Um, and uh, we're doing, we're not doing Papi Noir, so, so Lucky doesn't get to wrestle with me for too long. We're doing another one of our popular In My Imagination theme shows, which is if you like so-and-so, you might like such-and-such. So it's pretty, it's not, it's not that complicated, but it's basically, here's a writer. If you like Richard Yates, then you might like John O'Hara. They're very different writers, as I'll probably try to explain, but they have some similarities, particularly in the fact that they're both fairly realistic novelists. We, most of the writers we talk about, even Graham Greene or Brian Moore, they mix up their genres, they play around with genre a little bit. Both of these writers tend to write about a certain class, professional class of people, certain uh, uh, parts of New England particularly. They both went to Hollywood, so they have some Hollywood stories mixed in there as well. But they're basically realistic novelists. There's nothing, nothing fantastic ever happens in anyone. They never, they don't play with genre the way some writers do, and they basically work the, they work the areas that they know really well, the professions they know well, the types of people they know well, and the places, the bars and the, and the restaurants and the, and the office buildings, um, and they do it, and they still manage to keep, keep you totally kind of absorbed in these stories, even, even though they're in some ways very mundane settings i got my i'm having my martini a little early today just so we could do this do a couple of these this afternoon here's a picture of the old guy himself john o'hara with his famous walking stick he had some sort of some fancy walking stick he walked around with i have not got into this biography i have to say i didn't get i never read it i kind of stopped it after a while even though i like jeffrey wolf but um, i've never read a good biography of o'hara I wanted my. I was originally going to do John O'Hara and, and induct him into the All Bathtub Hall of Fame as one of the all-time great bathtub reads because I, I have really enjoyed him. But unlike anyone else I've put in that <coughs> illustrious category, I haven't read a lot of O'Hara. I've read him a couple of times in my life, and I've always wanted to read more of him. When I was really young and, and learning to write in my early 20s, my late teens, I read a couple short story collections of his, and I read his most famous novel, and not his best, but one of his most famous novel was his first, Appointment in Samara. It's got a great Somerset Maugham uh, parable in the middle of it. I won't tell you about it. It's worth reading just for the Somerset Maugham parable. And it's, it's about kind of, uh, kind of a, the last days of an odd character. I, have, I don't remember it too well. I read a couple of books of stories, and I was a big fan of his. Always wanted to read him again and have read bits and pieces, little short stories here and there, and never did get back to him as much as I'd like to. The past uh, week, past few weeks, actually, I like to kind of have two or three short story writers around and I kind of dip into them. For, for several weeks, I've been reading slowly through The Hat on the Bed. This is a collection from the 60s, and the stories are probably from the 50s and the 60s. O'Hara wrote hundreds of stories. He writes them with great facility, with with incredible ease. I've never read a bad John O'Hara short story. And they all kind of, they're all uh, absorbing, and they kind of cover a lot of different, a lot of ground, a lot of different ground. He's kind of not well known anymore, I don't think. He's He was, you know, it's kind of, I, I saw him talked about recently because he was kind of associated with that stupid Mad Men series, Mad Men, which I never got into. Um, it like like Yates because it it's kind of the glamorous of gla- glamorousness of people walking around in hats and 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 suits and, and going to going to the office and having affairs and getting and drinking too many martinis. And he's kind of connected with that, but he's not at all like Mad Men. His books, his stories are not at all like Mad Men. Just as Richard Yates' stories have nothing to do with that series. Um, he, he's call, he's often called a realist which I think is sort of unfair in a way because he writes very narrative stories. His stories rely a lot on dialogue and they tend to again go through the professions that he knows. He was a, an odd guy. He came from a fairly well-off family in Philadelphia. He creates a city, a town called Gibbsville. It reminds you a little bit of, uh, I forget the John Cheever neighborhood. There's, is it shade, uh, um, there's a little neighborhood that... Uh, Cheever invents for his suburban his suburbanites, 
And Gibbsville is a little town in Philadelphia that is kind of based on the town that uh, O'Hara comes from. And he started off in the well-off family, and then he went into the military, I believe, and then he got into journalism. He became a journalist, a kind of a hack journalist, traveled around a lot. And uh, he's his reputation is not very good these days. He's, he, he, I guess he wrote so much. He got kind of tarred with a brush that he was just too prolific. And he does have so many books. I mean, I just have some of this stuff here. I mean, there's a few short story collections. Pal Joey, that stupid uh, Frank Sinatra movie. From the Terrorist is considered his best novel, and he thought it was his best novel. And I haven't read it, but I do want to read it. And I'm planning to go back and do a lot of, uh, a lot of John O'Hara reading in the next, next few months. I wanted to give you just a few examples. Um, one of the things I do, for, I tend to forget his stories pretty quickly. I don't know why that is. That's just because I'm an old fart. And... Uh, there's so many good stories in this. Um, for example, I just want to give two or three quick summaries. There's a long story. He's got several novellas called 90 Minutes Away, about halfway through this book. And in that one, it's about a guy who's, who works for the newspapers in a kind of Gibbsville-type town in Philadelphia. And he's watching the, co he's watching the local cops roust a... Uh, a, a dirty party. So there's a, there's a, some parties going on at a bar, and they've got girls coming in there and doing lap dances probably and and, uh, and doing nude dances and so forth. And the cops go and bust them because the, the, the local sheriff, he wants to get all these kind of well-off well, well uh, local people, embarrass them, threaten to put them in jail, and then they, he's going to get them to, to give him money when he runs his campaign for mayor. <laughs> Something like that. So it's basically this guy's rousting all the wealthy people and then kind of he's basically blackmailing them. Uh, this this central character is a, a journalist and he goes, he watches this all happen and he sees this young girl, she may be 17 or 18, who's arrested and she's about to be thrown in jail. And she says she's never gone to jail before. And this for some reason this journalist decides he's gonna help her. And he causes he makes he 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 threatens to tell the tell everybody what's going on in this this basically you know, extortion game that the sheriff's playing. And he takes gets this girl off, but the sheriff throws him out of town and he goes off somewhere. I forget where I think he goes to Philadelphia he goes to Philadelphia or Boston or something. And he gets another job and this this girl he do, he takes with him, she she disappears again and she goes off and finds some guys with money. And it's kind of just about a fifty page story about a guy as a journalist and the people he meets and the strange characters he meets and this girl who he, he runs into over the next next 50 pages. It's really, it's just a completely absorbing story. It's not a real huge, strong plot, and it, yet you're sort of involved in all these people, and, and O'Hara knows his characters, he knows the places they go, he knows the kind of lives they lead. Um, and then that's, that's followed by a story called Our Friend the Sea, and that's another character going off on a boat ride, and he's taking, he's taking a transatlantic uh journey on my boat and he meets this young woman who's depressed and she's and he's talking to her about how the sea is his friend and she likes him because he calls the sea his friend and i don't want to tell what happens at the end of that story um the public dorothy this all the stories are, are kind of the sort of stories you want to call somebody and tell them tell them about the story it's about a guy who has an affair with a woman i think one of them may be married and the woman treats him, and when they go out to bars, they, they always go out to a bar or dinner before they go to bed together. And the woman does this because she doesn't want people to know they're sleeping together. She wants people to think they're just friends. So they meet, have a drink, and then she leaves him there, and then they go meet somewhere for sex. And she does it all the time. <laughs> it's, and it's just this odd little relationship. And it's almost all dialogue, these scenes. Um Teddy and his and the special friends. There's a perfect John O'Hara story. Teddy and the special friends is about a guy named Teddy. He's he sounds like he might actually be gay, though it's never really quite was quite clear. And he has lots of friends, and everybody loves Teddy. And basically, it's a bunch of people talking about how much they love Teddy, and various different people talking about all these wonderful things that happened when they were with Teddy and things they did with him. And then at the end of the story, Teddy shows up and, and goes to see his mother. And uh, it's, it's just a great story. The twinkle in his eye is about a man who's really kind of a loser. He's, never, he's, he's not really very popular with the ladies. And he meets a girl who, who actually sleeps with him. But she sleeps with a lot of guys. 
and he falls in love with her and he's really happy. He gets married to her, but then he always, always resents her for the fact that she slept around more than he did. And he, the story kind of takes you through his, his love for her and then his growing hatred of her. It's a really great little story. Yucca Knowles is the closing, another 50, 60 page story about a bunch of uh, kind of former B movie actors in LA. And after their careers are sort of over, and they end up in this suburb called Yucca Knowles, which is, I don't know where, it's somewhere out in, the, out in the valley, probably in the 30s or the 40s. And there's a director who sounds a bit like John Huston y type director who's always getting drunk and causing trouble. And it's just all their different lives, all the ways they made their money and the way they, they lost their reputations and the way they gained their reputations. And again, just it, it's a different cast of people, but it's L.A. O'Hara clearly knows L.A. and worked there for many years. So he knows the characters he's talking about. I really, if you really love short stories, you, you really can't go wrong to pick up any volume of short stories by John O'Hara. I've never read a bad short story of his. And I do want to read more. I mean, I, again, I think of him with Yeats in the sense that Yeats is, Yeats is a much more polished and careful writer than uh, O'Hara. But he was also a great novelist and a great short story writer. And I think that's true of O'Hara as well. There's, there's, they're not as deep and substantial and as dark uh, as, as Yeats and as accomplished almost on a line-by-line -line basis. But cumulatively, they're just as, they're in a monumental uh, collection of stories and novels in his life. So I would recommend The Hat on the Bed I like very much. Um, I read The Horse Knows the Way years ago. Appointment of Samar is his first and his shortest novel. And I kind of want I want to read that again. And um, the one I think that's really the only ones I really know well enough to recommend them. But I I do want to read the From the Terrace, which is his longest novel. And Butterfield Eight was his second novel, and that's also supposed to be good. I don't think he could write a bad a bad uh, a bad scene. That's been my experience. He was also kind of an unpleasant man. I get this feeling that a lot of people just didn't like him who knew him. He was a terrible drunk. He was very close friends of Steinbeck, was one of the few friends who kind of stayed with him through his life. And I think the title of the Jeffrey Wolf book, The Art of Burning Bridges, <laughs> I think he burned a lot of bridges in his life. And he was always getting mad at people. Um, but a wonderful short story writer. And you wouldn't notice it by reading him. He seems to have a sense of, of, of human, a sense of humanity, which is fairly generous, I think. Okay, happy bathing. Try, if you like either of these writers, you might like the other one, and we'll talk to you soon.